Hey, welcome back to another edition of Coming Soon, where I talk about discs that are coming soon. So I have a very short stack today. A lot of what I get are screeners from Arrow, and the Arrow screeners don't have any packaging, so there really isn't anything to show off for those. So I could at least tell you the fact that these things are coming out, but part of what I like to do with this is show you early what you're going to get and what the packaging is and what the extras are. So blindly picking from the style of just arrived discs. First up, we have Coming Soon. And again, look at the description under this for the release dates, the releasing companies, and Amazon links to get further information or pre-order if you like. Uh, if you use my Amazon links, it doesn't cost you anything more, and I get a little fraction of a penny for any things that might be sold. Uh, we have from Film Masters, which is a company that I really, really love. Film Masters takes all these things that were usually kind of orphaned works or public domain movies that were really never treated very well. Public domain always meant that any copy of something anybody could get their hands on, they could legally release and make money from, and they never really bothered to put much effort into it. Film Masters does. They're giving us definitive versions of a lot of films that are kind of beloved because they were such public domain, cheap bin, cheap VHS, cheap DVD, cheap Blu-ray staples, where a lot of us, when we didn't have a lot of money, if you were younger or you're curious, like, yeah, for a buck, I'll give that a shot. So a lot of things like Dementia 13 and some of the early Corman stuff and Night of the Living Dead and, uh, and well, It's a Wonderful Life, for one thing, probably wouldn't be the films they are today if it wasn't for the fact that they were so readily available and they were so omnipresent because they were public domain. So uh, Film Masters is putting out a double feature of Door to Door Maniac and Right Hand of the Devil. I've heard of Door to Door Maniac. I've never heard of Right Hand of the Devil. Uh, new 4K transfer from the original 35 archival elements on Door to Door Maniac. Oh, it stars Johnny Cash, Donald Woods, and Kay Forrester. And the ultra rare bonus film is Right Hand of the Devil. So what does it say? Uh, it could be your street, your house, your life. From the early 60s, Film Masters brings you the independently produced films representative of the neo-noir crime films of that era. Door to Door Maniac, originally released in 1961, is Five Minutes to Live. I've also heard of it under that title. And there also used to be like a gray market video company online or very mail order that was called Five Minutes to Live. Uh, stars Johnny Cash as a hardened criminal, Johnny Cabot. The wife, Kay Forrester, of the bank vice president is taken hostage in her own home. What follows is a robbery gone awry in every way. Pardon the top of my head while I read. Uh, <laughs> in the little-known film Right Hand of the Devil, Adam Kretschner takes his bid to become the next Hitchcock, while prominent movie director he is not. Turkish-born catcher does star in the film, and not just on screen. Producer, story editor, ed editor, story creator, editor, title designer, costume designer, just some of the other roles he took on with his magnum opus. A lot of times either you'll see an old film like this where it's the same name over and over and over again in the credits, or it's a whole list of things in one name, or more often than not, they would make up fake names to make it look like it was a higher budgeted film and it had more people working on it. So it would be all these bogus names. Um, I actually put my name in once to be have a bogus credit in a Fred Olin Ray movie because it was such a tiny production and he wanted to make it look, you know, like a bigger deal. So I'm credited in um, a really disreputable film. At least the title is disreputable. Uh, some of the other roles he took on this magnum opus, Catcher Leads the Cast, is an in 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 indigenous, ingenious criminal mastermind who hires a motley crew of questionable henchmen who are intent on robbing a sports arena. That all sounds fun to me. So the bonus features, feature-length documentary on Dora Dora Maniac by author and producer Daniel Budnick and film historian Rob Kelly, feature-length commentary for Right Hand of the Devil by Monstery, uh, by the Monstery Party Podcast. Is that Should that be Monster Party Podcast? Uh, unfamiliar with podcast. P uh, Player Piano, The Passion of Adam Cratcher, a visual essay from someone's favorite productions, liner notes by Don Stradley and C. Courtney Joyner in a full-color booklet, original trailer for Right Hand of the Devil, and a recreated trailer for Door to Door Maniac. This is uh, Door to Door Maniac, at least, is 1961, 75 minutes, thank you. Not rated black and white, 185 aspect ratio, it is closed captioned region A, B, and C, so that means anywhere in the world you pop this disc in. If you import this disc to Burundi, this will play on your TV there. So for those of you who like the sound of crinkling. Little extra bonus feature. So we crack it open and what we get is, and I do respect Film Masters for many reasons, but also that unlike the old people, <clears throat> not the elderly, but the old companies that would put out this kind of public domain stuff on video, they give each film their own disc. Maximum bit rate, maximum quality. Most of the time you used to find these things, they'd be crammed two to a DVD on a single layer DVD and they would look horrendous. Uh, booklet utilizes original art. Nice, thick, 
book with a lot of photos, a lot of press book, a lot of posters. I love that. The Film Masters booklets are always just as good as the supplements that they put on the discs, and they put good supplements on the discs for films that, again, never really had much respect. Uh, up next, two from Radiance Films. Radiance is a company that was started by someone who used to work for Arrow, British-based company, so not all of their releases see stateside use release. If you have an all-region Blu-ray or all-zone Blu-ray player, you can get their imported discs. So sometimes it's a like a rights issue. Somebody else already has the rights to a film here, so it only gets released in the UK, which is a shame because the releases are, are really pretty great. This is a film by Damiano Damiani, A Man on His Knees. Now, as I always point out, these releases have this sort of Japanese-style obi strip that wraps around. They're tucked inside the sleeve, so you can take those out if you don't want. They don't print their discs intentionally or their covers with half the title cropped off. So uh, what we have here is a world Blu-ray premiere, which is often the case with Radiance Films, and the quality of these is always perfect. They're much like Criterion in that the quality is impeccable. The extras might not be voluminous, but they're very insightful toward the filmmaker and the era and the genre and all that. So it tends to be mostly films I've never heard of, and it's just always like a cool little film school in one of these cases. So uh, Nino Giuliano Gemma from The Iron Prefect, a fine film also available from Radiance. Uh, a regular guy working on a kiosk learns from a friend he has been put on a mafia hit list and is being stalked by an assassin. I want to watch this movie tonight. Uh, featuring stunning turns from both leads. I'm sorry, the assassin is uh, Michele Placido from Romanzo Criminale. Uh, stunning performances from both leads. Uh, Damiani applies his trademark realism and sociopolitical commentary to this raw crime thriller, charting one man's desperation as he refuses to kneel before the power of organized crime. This sounds great. 4K restoration, archival interviews with Giuliano Gemma, Tanio Kishimarosa, and Mino Gerdi. I always mispronounce every name. My, my apologies. A uh, new interview with author Alberto Pezzata. Trailer booklet featuring new writing by Italian crime cinema expert Roberto Curti. This is a limited edition of 3,000 copies. And it is 1979. 110 minutes. Italian language. 185 mono. And again, some more crinkling. I don't open them until I show them to you. So. So we have the front cover. And the back cover, and they use the clear cases, which I always like, it's kind of classy. You get uh, the disc surface is always simple, but you're not really watching the disc surface. We have a uh, reversible cover with uh, what looks to be a real original artwork or some semblance of what an original poster might have looked like. And then we get the booklet, which usually features stills from the new film scan, which really, wow, which really sells how sharp and good these things look. Give you a little flip. Little, some photos, a lot of text. Again, much like Film Masters, anything that you find in the booklet in one of these Radiance Films uh, releases is not just, oh, I've already watched the extras and this is just the same information, or it's not just like a cast list or a chapter list or something like that. It's actual thoughtful, insightful commentary on the film they're releasing. Also from Radiance Films is Tokijiro, Lone Yakuza, a film by Tai Kato film I've never heard of. And this is, again, a world Blu-ray premiere. Uh, Tokijiro is portrayed by Kenosuke Nakamura from Goyokin, is a wandering swordsman who finds himself caring for the family of a man he killed under the orders of a Yakuza boss, but the criminal gang won't stop until the whole family is dead, including anyone who dares step in their way. So right after I watch uh, a, a man on his knees, I'll be watching uh, Tokijuro, because this sounds, fa sounds fabulous too. Uh, with this breathtakingly stylized film, Tai Kato broke all Yakuza genre conventions, fusing blood-spurting action, thank you, with melodrama worthy of Japanese cinema's greatest masters. Extras include a... F Interview with film historian Koushi Ueno, visual essay on star Kinosuke Nakamura by Japanese cinema expert Robin Gatto, booklet featuring new writing by Ivo Smits, or Ivo Smits, and a newly translated archival review, again, limited edition of 3,000 copies, front and back. This is a film from 1966. It's 90 minutes. Thank you. Not a lot of Japanese films that I encounter are a nice brisk 90 minutes. They tend to be minimum two hours. Uh, Japanese language in color, 2.35 widescreen and mono. This is a region A and B, and I should have, I should correct myself. Um, they're both 
region A and B. So if you live in England or you live in the Americas, these will work for you. Region A is uh, the US basically, US and probably Canada, I think, probably maybe Mexico. And region B is I believe just England. So more crinkling, we crack it open. Um, I'm not much to see there, simple printing on the disc. And we have cool. The original poster or semblance thereof and we have the booklet which is very moody anaglyph flip it back and forth it's anaglyph 3d and it's got a lot of writing and a lot of pictures scans again the pictures tend to be unless they're press material like a poster or uh, original ad material i should say images are always taken from the new scan of the film so they look amazing next up new to me is Terror Firma, a film by Jake McPherson, or McPherson, Let Madness Blossom. This is a new horror film that sounded interesting to me. This, uh, after a mysterious batch of otherworldly seeds arrive at their home, threatening to change the course of existence, Lola, a struggling artist, is forced to fight through it with her brother, Louis, or Louis, and defend herself from his unbalanced roommate, Cage, all while navigating a surreal landscape of internal and external danger. Uh, bonus materials or a director's commentary on the main feature, a Terra Firmer, ex, a firma, sorry, there's a trauma film called Terra Firmer, and this makes me confused. Uh, there's a Terra Firma extended director's cut. Wow, so there's two cuts of the film on here. Behind the scenes photo gallery, optional English subtitles for the main feature only, theatrical trailer. This is widescreen 235, so widescreen. Color from 2023, 84 minutes, thank you. Uh, there are English subtitles, and it is an English language film, English stereo. This is from MVD Visual and Dark Arts Entertainment. This is a region A, B, and C, which again means if you live in France and you buy this disc imported from America or this edition of this disc, you can throw it right in your player and it will work. No muss, no fuss, no uh, remote control hacks, no opening the tray and pushing in 11065 or something like that. It'll just work. So we crack it open, and uh, not much to see here, just a bit of the uh, graphic from the film on there. One more to go. Uh, ooh, I love Eureka Entertainment. Eureka Entertainment is one of these companies that I've followed online for years, and I never got any of their stuff, because until recently I didn't have all region capability. Now I do, and I'm nervous that the collection is going to grow to, see, you see that shelf back there? That's all the stuff that I haven't yet reviewed for the show that I've been sent. Those, uh, the top shelf is where it all is. It's too deep. So anyway, uh, Eureka was a company I always followed and really was impressed by what they're doing, but I never bought anything from them. Now they are handled by MVD, who's where I get most of my reviews from, uh, review copies, and they're putting things out in the US. And I'm very excited because I love Hong Kong cinema, classic 90s and earlier Hong Kong cinema, and they just specialize in that. So we have Jimmy Wang Yu is a man called Tiger. Really fun original. This is a slip case here, so front and the back. I do not know about this film, so let's find out. Starring Jimmy Wang Yu, the one-armed swordsman, and directed by Lo Wei, who's uh, the man behind the smash hit Bruce Lee vehicles, The Big Boss, and Fist of Fury, a Man Called Tiger is a martial arts extravaganza released at the height of the international kung fu craze. Uh, long rumored to be, have been the plan as the third collaboration between Lo Wei and Bruce Lee before Lee made his directorial debut with The Way of the Dragon. A Man Called Tiger instead became a vehicle for another martial arts superstar in Jimmy Wang Yu. Arika Classics is proud to present the film for the first time ever on Blu-ray from a brand new 2K restoration. I skipped what the movie's about, so I'll tell you what the movie's about. Uh, Jin Hu, Wang Yu, is a formidable martial artist who suspects his father's apparent suicide was actually a cold-blooded murder. Oh, great, it's a You Killed My Father movie. He, his desire for answers and revenge leads him to Japan, where he becomes entangled with the Yakuza. With the aid of his fellow countryman Liu Hanning, James Tian, who's in Hand of Death and a lot of stuff that you'd recognize, and a nightclub hostess, Mary Ye, Maria Yi from Fist of Fury, Jim Hu sets out to infiltrate Tokyo's underworld, expose a criminal conspiracy, and uncover his father's true fate by any means necessary. This found sounds fantastic. I'm going to be watching a lot of these things tonight. Uh, so, special Blu-ray edition includes this limited edition O-card slipcase featuring new artwork by Darren Wheeling, limited edition reversible poster of original poster artwork, 1080p presentation of a Blu-ray from 2K restoration of the rarely seen uncut Hong Kong theatrical release of the film, 1080p presentation on Blu-ray from a 2K restoration of the re-release version of the film. I love it when they do this. Multiple versions of the film on one disc. Uh, 88 does that as well. It's just, as a fan of any kind of movie, I like everything possible associated with it just to be in one package, even if it's a miniature version of the poster, even if the poster's the cover, give me all in one place. 
uh, original Mandarin and classic English dub audio options on both cuts of the film, thank you. Original mono presentations, optional English subtitles newly translated for this release, thank you, because old English subtitles that were burned into Hong Kong prints were often very um, amusing, shall we say, if not accurate. Brand new audio commentary on the Hong Kong version by East Asian film expert Frank Jang, who's great, and Michael Worth, who's great. Uh, brand new audio commentary on the export version by action cinema experts Mike Leader and Arnie Venema, who, who are great. Uh, Cutting Tiger hidden subtitles, brand new video essay by Brandon Bentley. Do you know what sadness means? Plus, because I have your love, music videos prepared exclusively for this release. Uh, textless opening, reversible sleeve featuring original poster art, trailer, plus a limited addiction, addiction? These kind of are, really. A limited edition collector's booklet featuring new writing on the film by writer and critic James Oliver and a short essay by Brandon Bentley about the versions of the film presented on present, presented pre, presented on this release. That's all amazing. So uh, this is a film by Lo Wei, 1973, Hong Kong, 112 minutes, 2.39 aspect ratio, and it is uh, b -b -b region A. So this is just only playable in these here United States. So the slip case, as you know, slips off to reveal the same image, front and back, crack it open, and we have cool graphics there, here and there. Take that out, take those out, and we have reversible cover with original poster art, but that's not all. We have a booklet, that, that there booklet there, with, uh, again, more poster art and all kinds of text and imagery in it. We have the aforementioned poster. 88 does this as well. So we get our new artwork there for this release. And on the back, we have the original poster. So again, if you're a fan of this kind of stuff like me and you love stuff, you love the peripheral things related to films, like the movie poster, the press book, uh, the soundtrack, all this stuff. I love it when a release gives us that because to hunt down that original poster for a man called Tiger, however many exist out there in the world, is probably not an inexpensive endeavor. And beyond that, despite what you see here, I don't have enough wall space for all the posters I own. So if I can have a mini tactile version of that poster, that's really cool. So that's all I have. Again, if you look at the bottom, if you look under this video on the YouTube or seek out wherever I've posted this, the YouTube page where we have all the information under this, you will get release dates for all of these. You will get the Amazon buying links for all these and a little bit of extra information. If you click on the Amazon links, they will also take you to the product page, which will give maybe a little bit more information than I gave too. So anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you the next time I have anything to talk about that is coming soon. Thank <laughs> you.